which follow the Lamb, whithersoever he goeth. These were redeemed from among them. Chat PPT is reciting Bible verses from. And in their mouth was found no guile, for they are without fault in the kingdom of God. And I saw another angel fly in the midst of heaven, having the everlasting gospel to preach unto them that dwell on the earth, and to every nation, and kindred, and tongue, and people, saying with a loud voice, Fear God, and give glory to him, for the hour of his judgment is come, and yeah. worship him that made heaven, and earth, and the sea, and the fountains of waters. And there followed another angel, saying, Babylon is fallen, is fallen, that great city, because she made all nations to drink of the wine of the wrath of her fornication. And the third angel followed them, saying with a loud voice, If any man worship the beast and his image, and receive his mark in his forehead, or in his hand, the same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of God, which is poured out without mixture into the cup of his indignation. And he shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels, and in the presence of the Lamb. And the smoke of their torment ascendeth up for ever and ever. And they have no rest day nor night, who worship the beast in his image. And whosoever receiveth the mark of his name, here is the patience of the saints. Here are they that keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. This passage is from Revelation 14 in the King James Version of the Bible. How about Revelation 21? <laughs> Certainly. Here is Revelation 21 from the King James Version, KJV. And I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth were passed away, and there was no more sea. And I, John, saw the holy city, Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people, and God himself shall be with them, and be their God. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death, neither sorrow nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. And he that sat upon the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. And he said unto me, Write, for these words are true and faithful. And he said unto me, It is done. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. I will give unto him that is a thirst of the fountain of the water of life freely. He that overcometh shall inherit all things, and I will be his God, and he shall be my son. But the fearful, and unbelieving, and the abominable, and murderers, and whoremongers, and sorcerers, and idolaters, and all liars, shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. And there came unto me one of the seven angels, which had the seven vials full of the seven last plagues, and talked with me, saying, Come hither. I will shew thee the bride, the Lamb's wife. And he carried me away in the spirit to a great and high mountain, and shewed me that great city, the holy Jerusalem, descending out of heaven from God, having the glory of God. And her light was like unto a stone most precious, even like a jasper stone, clear as crystal, and had a wall great and high, and had twelve gates, and at the gates twelve angels, and names written thereon which are the names of the twelve tribes of the children of Israel. On the east, three gates. On the north, three gates. On the south, three gates. And on the west, three gates. And the wall of the city had twelve foundations. And in them, the names of the twelve apostles of the Lamb. This passage is from Revelation 21 in the King James Version of the Bible. Uh, how about uh, Acts 2, 17 to 21? I'm sorry, but I cannot recite verses from Acts 2, 17 to 2, 21, as it doesn't correspond to any known biblical reference. If you meant a different passage or book, please provide more context or clarify your request. Yes, I meant Acts chapter 2, verse 17 to 21. Certainly. Here are verses, Acts 2, verse, verse 17, <laughs> King James Version, KJV. Hmm? And it shall come to pass in the last days, saith God, I will pour out of my spirit upon all flesh. 
and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. And on my servants and on my handmaidens I will pour out in those days of my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will show wonders in heaven above, and signs in the earth beneath, blood and fire and vapor of smoke. The sun shall be turned into darkness, and the moon into blood, before that great and notable day of the Lord come. And it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. These verses are from Acts 2, 17 and 21. Oh, what is the last verse of First Corinthians fourteen? <laughs> the last verse of First Corinthians fourteen in the King James Version KJV of the Bible is, <laughs> "Let all things be done decently and in order." This verse <laughs> emphasizes the importance of conducting affairs in a proper and orderly manner One, within two, the context three, of the church. Four, five. How about the second to the last verse of that chapter? The second to the last verse of 1 Corinthians 14 in the King James Version of the Bible is, For God is not the author of confusion, but of peace, as in all churches of the saints. This verse emphasizes the importance of maintaining order and peace within the church, as God desires harmony rather than confusion. Which verse is forbid to prophesy? In Acts 2, verse 17 to 18, Peter quotes the prophet Joel and applies it to the events happening at Pentecost. And in the last days it shall be, God declares that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Even on my male servants and female servants in those days I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy. These verses indicate that in the last days, people of various ages and genders will prophesy, meaning they will speak forth the message of God under the influence of the Holy Spirit. Is there, uh, what does 1 Corinthians 14.1 say? First Corinthians 14, 1 Corinthians 14.1 in the King James Version, KJV of the Bible says, Follow after charity and desire spiritual gifts, but rather that ye may prophesy. This verse encourages believers to pursue love, charity, and to desire spiritual gifts, particularly the gift of prophecy, which involves speaking forth messages from God under the guidance of the Holy Spirit. What is the verse in Isaiah that says, uh, Call the Sabbath a delight? The verse you're referring to is Isaiah 58, 13, in the King James Version, KJV of the Bible. If thou turn away thy foot from the Sabbath, from doing thy pleasure on my holy day, and call the Sabbath a delight, the holy of the Lord honorable, and shalt honor him, not doing thine own ways, nor finding thine own pleasure, nor speaking thine own words. This verse emphasizes the importance of honoring the Sabbath day as a delight, and treating it as a holy day dedicated to the Lord. Is there a Bible verse that prophesies that knowledge shall increase? Yes, the verse you're referring to is Daniel 12, verse 4, in the King James Version, KJV of the Bible. But thou, O Daniel, shut up the words, and seal the book, even to the time of the end. Many shall run to and fro, and knowledge shall be increased. This verse is part of a prophecy given to Daniel about the time of the end, suggesting that in the last days there will be an increase in knowledge. How about the verse that there is sweet to the mouth and the bitter to the belly and thou must prophesy again? The verse you're referring to is Revelation 10, verse 9 to 11, in the King James Version, KJV of the Bible. And I went unto the angel and said unto him, Give me the little book. And he said unto me, Take it and eat it up. 
and it shall make thy belly bitter, but it shall be in thy mouth sweet as honey. And I took the little book out of the angel's hand, and beat it up, and it was in my mouth sweet as honey. And as soon as I had eaten it, my belly was bitter. And he said unto me, Thou must prophesy again before many peoples and nations and tongues and kings. This passage describes the experience of the Apostle John eating a little book given to him by an angel. It was sweet in his mouth, but bitter in his belly. Then he was instructed to prophesy again before many people, nations, tongues, and kings. Okay, what is Exodus 16.23? Ayat ini merupakan bagian dari perintah Tuhan kepada umat Israel mengenai hari Sabat yang dianggap sebagai hari perhentian dan suci. Tuhan memerintahkan agar pada hari Sabat umat Israel tidak bekerja, termasuk dalam Mereka minta untuk menyiapkan makanan pada hari sebelumnya, sehingga mereka dapat beristirahat sepenuhnya pada hari Sabat. Uh, what, what is Exodus 1623 in English? What is Exodus 1623 in English? Exodus 16 verse 23 in the English standard version of the ESV of the Bible reads. He said, this is what the Lord has commanded. Tomorrow is a day of solemn rest, a holy Sabbath to the Lord. Bake what you will bake and boil what you will boil, and all that is left over lay aside to be kept till the morning. This verse is part of God's instruction to the Israelites regarding the Sabbath, emphasizing the importance of resting and refraining from work on that day. Thank you. Якщо у вас є ще якісь питання або потребуєте додаткової допомоги, не соромтеся запитати.